Hello and welcome to the Build a Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and hang out with you. And uh, I got model kits to build and I got hangouts to do. So thanks so much for joining me. Uh, my delay is a little long here right now, but that, that should be okay. It's like 10 seconds. That that should be fine. Aristovan's here. Uh, Def Beats is here. Uh, yeah, you can throw the Bear Cave leg of the Scythe mode in chat. Let me know that you're here and you're ready to watch me uh, build the model kit because I'm excited to build the model kit. Lashbrook is here. Hi, Lashbrook. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Epic of Worlds here. Hi, evening, Pat and Chad. Yeah, well, good evening to you. Um, so you may have noticed that before you enter some chat commands, uh, Lord Crash is here, hello, um, that I have implemented uh, some chat rules. This is a thing that is long overdue. You know, I, I talk about them when I talk about what kind of streams we do here. I mentioned them before, but I've never actually put them into practice as far as putting them in there. It was always a thing where I was like, well, when I get mods, I'll craft up some rules and um, chat rules rule yeah uh when i get mods i'll uh i'll have like some set stuff uh and then further guidelines for mods about like hey in this case do this in that case do that i haven't implemented mods yet so i didn't hadn't done chat rules but i think it's good especially for people coming in that are searching the gunpla tag that are looking in uh makers and crafting for something going on and come across the streams so We'll talk about that pretty briefly. Uh, it just says, uh, this streamer believes in the phrase entertainment, not escapism. I may change phrase, um, uh, but that's a minor thing. Uh, no topic is banned in chat, but hate speech, derogatory terms, and personal attacks will not be tolerated. Be respectful, be awesome, but do not be afraid to talk about our reality. Um, and especially in these times, because I, like I said, I know there's chats that say, like, no COVID talk because they just want to be the escapism part uh, of entertainment. Uh, there are places that are like, no politics. There are places that are like, let's not talk about the speaking out movement or whatever. You know, like, hey, we're watching the Ubisoft press conference. No talking about uh, the work that Ubisoft clearly needs to do within its HR and culturally. Uh, within the company. Uh, let's not talk about that. It's like, forget that. We are going to talk about those things. And as I said, we're not looking uh, for hate speech or derogatory terms. We're not looking to put people down in this chat. We're looking to be respectful, and you already are. You folks are great. But like, you know, uh, somebody messaged me today uh, uh, through my uh, DM asking about uh, how I, I mentioned my demisexuality in uh, my Twitter bio. And they had questions about that. And that's awesome. So if you have questions about things, if you have comments about things, if you want to talk about stuff that's coming on with you, like that's, yeah, I'm not going to put things off limit. If you're bummed out, if you're feeling sad, oh, you know, yeah, I'm not a therapist. I don't know what I can do to help. Um, and I, you know, and I assume you're not actually looking for help or guidance in that regard, but sometimes you just want to be like, ugh, my job. And I'm like, yeah, right. Or like, it's fucking hot out, but yeah. Like, we don't talk about stuff. Or you can just be like, uh, I live in Portland. Uh, and be like, yeah, dude, okay. You know, yeah, we can fucking talk about stuff. Um, Pat is not a doctor, only a Gundam doctor. Yeah. Uh, I'm like a Gundam, like, chiropractor. Like, I just kind of align stuff better and put things around in there. Um, but I don't diagnose Gundams. Uh, speaking of which, if you like premium Gundams, P Bandai, the premium Bandai group, is putting out some new pre-orders that are shipping in December. Uh, yeah, Aristophan says, I do live in Portland. Aristophan, f shit's fucked. And, like, you can talk about that as much or little or not at all. But, like, don't think, I don't want anyone to think that. Well, we're building Gunpla, so let's stick to Gunpla, because also, obviously, I don't fucking stick to Gunpla. But, like, yeah, share what you want to share. Don't share if you don't want to share. But definitely, like, f you know, you can. You can talk about things. You can talk about video games. We can talk about music and movies and all kinds of stuff. Anything. Wrestling, whatever. Good side of wrestling, bad side of wrestling. Uh, you know, like, all those things. Uh, not just new peen band guns, but exclusive towels and pillows. Last week, I didn't see that part. I did see the Armadillo Sandrock, which, folks, 
The R. Mm. Okay. Uh, we're going to get to building uh, Bandai. Where's the premium Bandai thing? Uh, premium Bandai. Yo, it's... There we go. Uh, wait, there's gun to body pillows. I don't know if they're body pillows, like throw pillows. Okay, yeah. They probably just got like, you know, the Gundam thing going on there. Uh, all right, so... Where did they, where did they put that? Uh, oh, yeah, they got some shirts. Yeah, they got all kinds of stuff. Uh, I, I, I will just say this. I'm not going to link to it. Um, there's some cool stuff out there uh, that looked real neat, and I'm into it. Uh, some of the pre-orders that showed up look real good. Uh, that armadillo is... Almost makes the sand rock look cool. Uh, oh, cool. There's a. While I was looking at a website, uh, we got our uh, our first ban of the month, at least. I don't know if we banned anybody in June, but this is the first ban of July. So sorry about that, y'all. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be famous. I would like to be financially secure, but I don't need to be famous. Uh, we're going to go the overhead. We're going to get working on our, our system uh, here. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, there's some. So the one, the pre-order, I'll talk about the Sand Rock because most of y'all know my feelings of Sand Rock is that they are not great. It is my least favorite of the Gundam Wing Gundams. Uh, I think that adding a cape or cloak is kind of cool but it doesn't really help it. Adding weird shoulder armor things kind of makes it cooler, but not really. Um, the Airmaster Burst is like a blue and white and gold Gundam that has like jet shoulders, like jet rocket shoulder things. Uh, and it's pretty cool. It looks pretty neat. If I was going to pre-order any of them, which I'm not pre-ordering any of them, it is a high-grade one for four, um, but that looks pretty neat. Um, I love how they stuck booster rockets on the Meganex shield and called it a day. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. So let's go to the overhead. We're on the overhead here. Shoulder armor on anything usually does not look great. Not a fan of huge shoulders. Well, it, it's just like jet shoulders. I don't know. I think it looks pretty neat. I think it looks like like a blue and white plane became a robot you know a little little uh, seeker little uh, transformer seekers i don't know i'm into it uh hello to everybody that's here in the chat uh thanks so much for being here so we got a big arm i just want to look if you missed saturday this thing's got a big arm um it's got a very big arm and i i love that uh and it just pops back in and then it doesn't have a big arm anymore. Well, it does. It's still, even when it's not that big, it's still a big arm. I love that the compressed version of it is still big. Uh, it's very cool. Um, but So that's what we're working on is the Seltzum, uh, which is the Mach 3. Basically, build, got somewhere in Gundam build, there was a personalized version of the Mach 3, uh, which then got modified even further by making it an asymmetrical model kit, which, as I've said, I like asymmetrical model kits. I think, you know, shoulder armor being different doesn't really count in, like, a Zaku or, like, oh, this arm has a shield. I'm talking, like, like the, the Shenlong. Like, one of my arms extends. Mm -hmm. Or, in this case, one of my arms is a different color. Uh, oh, I also want to show you the masked man, the pilot of this ship, of this this uh, suit on a ship there. Uh, just see if we can see this dude here. Check out this fucking dude. Uh, is that the main villain of an anime for kids or what? That is definitely the villain for an anime for kids. 
uh, masks have become a tradition uh, item in various Gundam series and are worn by rival characters. Many of these masks are available as part of the diver's look in GBN. The custom-made mask worn by uh, Kyoya Kui, uh, Kujo, I should say, during his investigation of mask divers, and the mask included in the hero costume of the famous G Turbo Captor Zeon are a few unique to GBN. And uh, there are many other niche masks available in the lineup of diver looks. This dude's got a mask with horns on it and a big buster sword. And he pilots a kit whose main weapon is a giant lance that it houses on its shoulders with its big extendo arm. And its shield that is actually a gun. Which we'll, show, we'll do at some point. This thing... You can see that the shield is a gun. This thing is... It's one of the edgelordiest Gundams I've ever put together. And my favorite Gundam is the Death Sights. So that's saying something. Because the Death Sight Hell... The Death Sight Hell custom from Endless Waltz is just like... Make it more like a bat. The wings... The shielding should also be wings. Put some red on it. I don't know why. Red accents. Cool. Dang, that is saying something. Yeah, right? Because the Love Phantom, which is somewhat a Death Scythe from Build, is also like, what is the Death Scythe but spider arms? And I, I always love that. I always love that so much. I think the Love Phantom is a great kit. Um, but yeah, that's that's my general feeling on that is like, okay, well. Um, <laughs> this is very edgelordy. And it's also the pilot. It looks pretty good. All right, folks, I got to tell you something here. And, uh, you know, this is a controversial statement. Um, when it's hot out, uh, biking isn't great. It's not great to bike when it's hot out. Um, in fact, it's unpleasant, especially if you haven't biked in a long time and suddenly you're like, I'm going out for a ride for 45 minutes or half an hour in the case of today where I was like, you know what I don't want to do? Keep biking. And I was just like, I'm near my house. I'm just going to stop. Oh boy. Uh, it is okay. As long as the Gundam does not tweet, do not need a Gundam edge or tweeting. Yeah. Uh, nothing is great when it's hot out, especially in the humid heat. Yeah, yeah, this is like, you know, I've been in worse. I've dealt with worse, but it's not fun right now. Now, here's the thing that I can do that I might try to do tomorrow and just like see what's up. And that is, what if y'all, just hear me out. What if I took the apparatus that was a Christmas gift for my dad, which he's, which I put together for him, and he's never used, which, which attaches to the back of a bicycle, making it a stationary bike. And then I turn this bicycle that I don't have any problem riding, that I'm kind of getting a little used to, whatever, and I could bike with air conditioning, and just make it a stationary bike and I could like you know set it up in a room and like put my iPad on a stand and like watch YouTube videos or something maybe maybe um, there is a, a room for a basket and when the basket's off there's just a little plate and I figured out that with a rubber band I could put my phone on there now I normally will put my phone in my pocket and not on the bike but I could like put that there and then like just have my phone on uh, as I'm like pedaling and I, I I don't know if I'm gonna do it but I'm certainly like considering it for like because it's it's hot out and then also uh, those are great I thought about buying one yeah the the nicest thing about this is like it it doesn't it just like pressurizes on to uh, like the back tire uh, the frame at the back tire um, and then you just you know, run it and it's fine. And you know, it's a little heavy, but whatever. It's not not, not that heavy. Um, but it, it doesn't disable it for being a bike, 
which is good, so that it still could be a bicycle. But it means that I could, you know, bike indoors. And that sounds pretty good. I like. I think that, I don't know, but I think I might give that a go. Uh, Because that just seems like a thing that might be a good idea. And then, uh, you know, you're biking and you're not outside. And also, you don't have traffic to deal with. That sounds real good because I haven't run into too much. But like also, you know, I'm not really getting super adventurous with it anyway. Uh, and then it also, I guess I would want to keep my phone in my pocket so that I get like miles traveled uh, with my, my buddy and I get Pokemon, you know, like catch some eggs. So I probably want it in my pocket, but we'll see. I don't know. Also, it's safer to listen to podcasts when you're biking on a stationary bike than when you are biking uh, on the street. So then I have a place to catch up on my podcasts and not just watch you i don't know how have y'all been doing this i'm gonna jump topics here because i think i'm done talking about bicycles for a moment uh uh some podcasts i listen to have video components and i've been watching those because i just have the time to watch things like at night uh Hey, Harold, just subscribed to Tier 1. That's 32 months. Thank you so much, Harold. Uh, let's hit the emotes in there. Thank Harold very much uh, for that. Renewing your subscription. Always appreciated, my friend. Thank you so much for your continued support. It means the world to me. And also, hi, Harold. Welcome, welcome. Um, always appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been watching, like, videos... And sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, you, you, you definitely missed it if you're, you're not watching the video. But most of the time it's just like, yeah, that's the podcast I listen to, just in video format. Uh, it does help in uh, uh, um, reducing the amount of podcasts that are just in my backlog, which is always good. Where I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going to listen to this one because I got two more from this podcast creator, so... Probably going to pass on that because I don't have a commute right now. My commute is biking or walking. So, so I'm like, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll test that out tomorrow. The idea of like, even, even if I biked in my uh, garage, that would be better than being out in the sun. Like it's still hot. There's not air conditioning in the garage, but it would still be good. Oh, uh, Harold just cheered 69. Nice. Thank you very much, Harold, for that. Appreciate it. Uh, I do that giant bomb beast when I can watch at home, which is all the time now. Watch the video versions. Yeah. Yeah. Like, also, Beast Cast is fun because there's, like, reference. They talk about, like, the room they're in, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jeff's uh, son might come in, or there's, you know, or they're making fun of Abby's, like, setup or something, or Alex is going to put on a mask, like, I don't know, there's stuff. Uh, actually, the mask thing might have been the Hotspot premium video, so I apologize if that's what that was. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. They, I think they're a little more active and stuff. Um I appreciate that. Bits and coins are always appreciated. And also, you know, the usual, like, gift and subs, renewing your subscription, converting your gifted sub into one. Yes, the, the hotspot. Uh, if you are a premium Giant Bomb member, I would recommend this past Friday's hotspot because it featured founder of the hotspot Rich and, uh, and friend Rich Gallup. Lovely gentleman who it was very funny when the hotspot came back there. Be, the, he was one of the people just being like the hotspot is back. The thing I started is back. And we're like, oh, yeah, it's for premium members. So he's like, oh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a premium member. But he and Danny were both like, what the hotspot? And it was like, yeah, yeah, it's back. I can see who pays attention to video stuff. But I, I understand. Not everyone does. Um, but yeah, uh, all right, pre-rolls are done. Okay, cool. You know, it's going to be a late Monday. I feel like we're not going to get like, uh, he's pretty good at wrestling 2000 though. Yeah, he is. 
annoyingly decent enough at WrestleMania 2000 and wouldn't... I'm not saying he should have taken the dive and let... Uh, that we didn't ask him to do and let uh, Aaron win since the plan was to uh, probably maybe do a show in a state that he wasn't going to go to because he doesn't go to... He only goes to the... East Paxes, but whatever. And it's fine. It was fine. We didn't really have a prize because we didn't know. Literally, we didn't conceive of a prize that year um, because we didn't know who was going to win it because it didn't particularly matter. And if it storyline reasons made sense to have a, uh, something aligned with it, peek behind the curtain uh, there, then we would have included it, but we didn't really need it. So it was like, okay. Hotspot is my favorite thing on Giant Bob right now. Also, Giant Bob needs to comp reach a membership. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, memberships are an important thing, right? Uh, but yeah, probably. Uh, no, uh, collusion, right? No, it was a lack of collusion. We just didn't, we didn't plan it out. We didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, we didn't make any attempt to decide who was going to win it. Because I was like, well, if it's somebody that makes sense with the storyline, then we'll, like, make up a thing they win. And if not, we'll just be like, you won the Rumble. Uh, he could learn about a few more games of the free membership. Lord Crash said, yeah, that was my favorite thing when he's just like, hey, tell me about video games. Because also, it seems like Rich doesn't have to just play mobile games right now, which he was always the guy that was playing mobile games because working for Disruptor uh, in the position he had, he needed to know about what was going on in the mobile game space. It's actually kind of nice because he would play things that very few people I know were playing. So it, it was helpful for, for someone. You know, his end of the year list were always like, oh, that's kind of cool. There's only be a couple gems for the phone. Um, all right. So this goes on here like that. We got a little rockets in there. Put them in there. Getting our legs going here. Mostly done with our legs. Yeah. All right. We're going to put on a few more pieces here. B2. Uh, okay. We'll put those in there. Get some more purple going here. Love this purple. It's a great purple. Uh, B3. Great. Uh, did you see start reading emails from Danny every week? From Dan Yes. I would love that if they are just like, hey, Danny, can you... Once you're done moving out of your facility, you barely spent any time in and did any work in right before COVID. Uh, could you, would you mind re reading some, re recording some emails remotely for us? I'm sure he'll be on at some point. Yeah, purple, right, Slowbird? Uh, you know, I always talk about the, um, I don't always talk about this. I shouldn't say, I, I got to stop saying stuff like that. But I often talk about, um, you know, I, Vig, the Vignagina, the purple Vignagina that looks like it's a, it's like Megatron colors and how that's like such an underrated kit in the fandom um, because it's uh, F91. Uh, so it is not thought of that often. But dang, that first Vignagina. And then the Vignagina 2, they're like, well, make it red. It's like, I mean, you can. Just what if you didn't? What if you had a cool purple badass mobile suit? You just do that. Uh, but yeah, always got a soft spot for the Vig Nagina because it just looks badass. All right, moving along on here. Put these there. Do I miss my shelving, my shelves for, for trees? Yes, I do. Did it make sense for me to bring them here? No, it did not. So I did not. Um, anyway, uh, just so you know, Anytime I take a pause tonight, it's just because I have the Bug Snacks theme in my head because they released the official full-length version of the song with a musical performance today. And so I just have the Bug Snacks. It's Bug Snacks theme in my head. Uh, talking about Bug Snacks. Because it's just like a really catchy, lovely little thing. It's just a lovely little song. It's just great. It's just bug sex. Yeah. Carol can be noticed so good. Yes. Ten matches were deleted by a moderator. Ooh. Uh, epic open world. 
sorry, Epic Open World, that you just got a timeout. Um, so, uh, I assume that you were just excited and wanted to share something. And I'm sorry that Nightbot got mad at you. And I'm also sorry that Nightbot is literally says stop spamming caps, but yeah. Uh, I could probably take that out. Uh, so I apologize, Epic Overworld, for that. Um, no, it it's slow burn. It's not a um, it's not a uh, Love Shack parody. No, but yeah, sorry about that, Epic Overworld. Um, remember when we were talking about the anime FLCL and a bunch of people got timed out because they were just typing FLCL and had to be like, oh shit. I should change that because people do want to talk in caps, uh, caps lock. So I should probably adjust that. I'm going to make a note. Sorry. I'm going to make a note. Uh, caps lock. Nightbot. See if there's something I can like a happy medium between what happened to that. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, the. Uh, no, it's not, it's not that, <laughs> it is not a Love Shack parody. Um, but yeah, it is just a really cute little playful song. Uh, talk about bug snacks. That's all it is. Oh, oh, oh. bug snacks. Talk about bug snacks. Uh, just a great, great tune. Cool, cool shit. Fun times. Good stuff. I'm putting together more parts of this model kit. Uh, wrong song. Uh, howdy to you, Mr. Bob. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Working out here. Working on this cool kit. The Seltzum. Oh. Guys just coming up with different Bug Snacks parody songs. Bunch of weird owls over here. Enjoy it. You're building a PC? Okay. Well, how's that going? You're doing okay, Mr. Bob, with that? Uh, sometimes that's real fun. And sometimes that's not real fun. So I hope that this, in this instance... Uh, it is real fun. And you're like, cool new shit going together really well. Oops. I thought this cable would reach there, but I have extenders. So glad I have these extenders. Glad that I have a drawer full of computer stuff that I didn't, never thought I would actually need. But turns out I do because I don't have enough. Uh, I'm adding more drives and I didn't get uh, the SATA drive cable. Um, it's at a moment things could change real hard. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, I have only I've only built a few PCs. Uh, Epic Home World says I am free now. Oh yeah. So sorry about that, Epic Home World. Uh, caps locks are bad. No SATA drives at all. There you go. But it's just like that cable where you're like, oh shoot, um, shoot, shoot, shoot. I thought this was gonna work exactly how I wanted it to, and it's just not. But I, I've definitely had that. Where you think you're golden and you are not golden. All right, so put this here. Uh, I once had to duct tape a drive in place because the cable didn't reach the drive bay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to do stuff like that. Um. Uh. So, I was talking about how my PC. It. Uh. It's a little bit of the case is like just a little banged up, but like for the most part. We got no problems and everything is cool and there's no sweats at all. No sweat at all, right? But uh, one thing that did happen is uh, my... Because I took the drives out. I took the... Uh, I have two drives. I have big, uh, old, uh, uh, four terabyte hard drive. And then I have like a SATA drive that's like 500 something gigs. Like half a terabyte uh, uh, SSD. I took them out because I was like, that. that's a good thing to take out. Um... But I packed things, but the uh, all the drive bays are all fucked. So the SATA, th so the uh, SD drive is 
in another spot where the DVD drive should be. But right now I have a little box that my hard drive is on top of, and that's not good. So I do need to get new, I need to get a couple new bays that would work with this kit, um, which is totally possible, um, is not going to be a problem, but I do need the kit, uh, P case, not kit. I do need to get those. So that is the thing that I have to do in the future. Um, Epic World says, I was saying uh, before uh, Nightbot got mad, Pat, I had the song out of my head, and then you had to mention it, and now it's back. Epic World, I'm so sorry about that. I am sorry that I got uh, that tune um, back in your brain. Uh, that, you know, that's rude of me, so I, I do apologize for that. I, I, I got that song. Right. Uh, the case and the CPU cooler are by Fractal. We're not big on words or diagrams. Yeah! Yeah, they're very much big on you finding the exact product on a YouTube tutorial and having someone else explain you how they did it. Uh, and the key to that is watch the whole video. That's my big key. Folks, if you're ever like, oh, I, I want to learn more about, uh, I got this motherboard and, oh, somebody made a YouTube video about this. Watch the whole video because sometimes they fuck up and then you can see after they fucked up instead of doing the thing they did. That's my big piece of advice if you are using the internet to help offset uh, instructions. Um, uh, the Cooler Master case I got earlier this year wasn't real big on instructions either. Uh, glad I don't have actual drives because this case does not have drive bays. Yeah, sometimes they don't. Uh, they've got uh, uh, a lot of, co I mean, a lot of them are just like, well, here's where you can screw in a uh, an SSD or they assume that you just have a, the motherboard you're putting in just has uh, M3s, uh, whatever the ones are that look like like naked RAM that you just unscrew and put in there. They assume you have those drives. Uh, I forget the name of it. Uh, it's something threes. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. Um, they just assume you have that. Uh, even if you don't. Okay, so we'll put this here. So we need C24. Great. Pull that there. Um, uh, all the SSD mounts and the drive mounts are hidden behind the motherboard tray. Yes, there's room for like one or two big drives. There you go. I am old and no longer find joy in building PC. I got one of those sites that you choose the exact parts you want. I know more expensive, but I just don't want the hassle anymore. Uh, M2 drives. Yes, Beats, thank you so much. M2, I knew it was like, yeah, the M2 drives. They just want you to screw in the M2 drive and put the screw in there and go for that. Uh, yeah, those things, yeah. Uh, you need to take the GPU out to change them. Yes, yeah. Like, no, I totally, um, I totally understand the idea of uh, just being like, you know what? I'm just going to pay the difference and not worry about it. I enjoyed putting together this PC because uh, I did it on stream and it was kind of fun to do that. I had my laptop like, streaming as I built and then uh, basically stopped the stream because I was just like, I'd forgotten to plug some stuff in, but it was mostly done. But also I had been using my monitor as an external, my monitor for the PC as an external for my laptop. So I had to unplug that so that I could make sure things were working. Uh, but yeah, I felt pretty good about that. Uh, my motherboard, yeah, you can double it, yeah, but you have to move, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a frustrating thing. You don't want to take the GPU out if you don't have to. Um, yeah, I think I have room on my board for one. I don't remember, but I have a, you know, like I said, I have the, the old school drive that's from another computer that is just for files. It's for, like, lots of video files and various other things, and it's just storage, um, but, uh, but yeah, I have to like get a new drive bay thing for, for that that like actually works, which is annoying. But I gotta do it. Because <coughs> it's not great that it's just on a tiny little box inside my PC. Uh, that's a weird thing that it's doing right now. And then I have, uh, yeah, my, my, the uh, SSD is good. It's a good SSD. So I did not skimp out on that. Uh, I was reading reviews of CP, 
uh, you coolers to find the best looking and weirdest CPU coolers that are somewhat expensive because I'm too weird to just go with a common choice. I hear you. Uh, I saw a really sick one on Linus Tech Tips video about uh, axle press bills. Oh. Yeah, um, I I don't have like uh, a radiator. Like my, I think my PC. Yeah, my PC could. I could do a front radiator if I wanted to, and do it like an air cooler and do all that. Um, it would have to be on the front. Um, but uh, I haven't done that. I just have fans on the front and fan in the back, and you know, uh, kind of go. And then I got a you know cooler on it that works pretty good. Cooler is good. It's a good cooler. So happy about that. All right, we've done our legs here. We're going to move on to our feet. Uh, leg day is over. It's time for feet times. So we'll uh, we'll play a little footsie with our maroon feet here. Excited about that. With this, I love this like piece here. The the kneecap that is just like the say that that red color. That is a lovely touch. I'm always always excited about. Just think that rules. But these are pretty simple. I mean, you know, this is a, um, what do you call it? Uh, this is a high grade, right? So, like, some of the times these things are. Oh, also, you know, the the, the the maroon here and the maroon here, which would be here if this was the, you know, the same, but it's not. Uh, that is a lovely touch as well that I, that I definitely enjoy. Uh, hello, Dirty. Welcome. Redeemed. Oh, Dirty wants me to hit that gong. Okay. Uh, thank you for redeeming your channel points. It is time for the gong. So we will get ready to gong it up. Here you go. Good evening and welcome. Here's your gong. We did it. Uh, Lord Crash didn't also be able to hit that gong. We did it. Now Death Beats wants me to hit that gong. I hit the gong. Thank you all. You know, I, I feel like it's been like days since, like like weeks since anyone redeemed the gong. Uh, and at one point, Harold redeemed the soundboard. And I was like, oh yeah, the soundboard. Uh, I only use that for applause these days. But uh, but that is that is totally cool with me. Uh, Finally going there. Triple gong break. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Dirty says... What did the rents think of the gong? It took a little while to explain why I had it, uh, but it was fun to be like, well, mom, you know how you po you gave me that soundboard? She was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, well, the chat really liked it. Uh, play the soundboard, indeed. Uh, yeah, Lord Crash did. I decided to take it with me. It's, it came on the plane. Uh, I had room in my suitcase for it, but yes, I am. I'm still doing the gong. So here's the soundboard. This is the thing my mom got for me for Christmas, which is very nice. So we'll do, and we'll do, and we'll do, and we'll do, and then. So we'll do that. Thank you for hitting that cash in the soundboard but yeah so when i i, I explained it and i think that my dad was like what's that and i was like i oh, it's a decorative gong the nice thing is like doing comedy for many years as i did i you know uh being part of of the comedy world and doing so many shows like at this point you know my parents get it of like oh i'm doing this thing i'm doing this They're like they get you know, when I'm just like, yeah, he, pre he bought it for a sketch and then he left it. I love the soundboard. Yeah, it's it's a fun little bit of business. I always enjoy the soundboard. But yeah, it's uh, for for me, it's like, you know, it's all entertainment. It's all weirdness. Like, sure. None, none of this is like out of, out there. And none of the things that I've got going on. Got a little soundboard? Of course. I got a gong? Sure. We'll, we'll incorporate the gong into, into it. There's an piece of nonsense that I really like. Uh, but yeah. Um, oh, so I was talking about outside stuff. I just want to say this right here because I don't have much more to say about PC stuff, computer stuff. Uh, I did some yard work today and I don't miss having a yard. Uh, I said this when I moved to New York and uh, one apartment I had, uh, I would... Uh, 
Uh, now this is the best sentence. I like that. Um, it, I would shovel like the steps at my apartment, my last apartment. Um, if I got home like late at night. Ooh, I forgot a step. Y'all, I forgot a step. Oh no. Okay. So I was supposed to put in, before I put this purple on, I was supposed to put in these things here. And I didn't do that. So now I have to try to get the purple piece out without it causing an issue. So because it's in there tight, I am going to try to use the snipper clips. Yep, that'll work. It might damage it a little bit, but it should be okay. Great. Okay. That was good. Normally I will use my tools and wedge, but that's not really going to wedge too well out. So easy fix. Uh, and we can get this back in. Um, yeah, I, uh, so I remember I moved, and the first year I moved to New York, uh, there was a terrible snowstorm in Connecticut, where I'm from. And it was just like a, a bad winter of snow. And I was so glad that I didn't have to shovel. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't have to shovel. And I'm down here, and I go on my bike ride, and I'm sweating, and I'm just tired. And then it's like, hey, what if you uh, raked up all of the grass clippings from the mower? Because the mower leaves a bunch of grass clippings. And then it's so hot that those dead grass clippings just brown and become gross. So they got to get raked up. And then I'll sweep the edges of the driveway. Get up all the stuff that comes from the trees. And it's like, yeah, I'm living here rent free. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not fun today, y'all. Yard work after a bike ride. I will, I'll go on record as saying, not pleasant. Did not enjoy, would not recommend. Uh, if you can avoid, you should avoid. Uh, one thing that's cool about this, even though we had, uh, this arm is complete nonsense and extra. Uh, the legs are 100% uh, identical down to the only thing that's different is putting on uh, the parts to lock in with the waist, which we're going to be building real soon. So that that's pretty cool. These are basically I, completely symmetrical. It does make things easier, even if it is, you know, cooler uh, in some ways uh, to have it be, you know, unique. Uh, all right, so we need 19 and 18 on this, and then 40, great. Put that there. Um, yard work is the worst. If I ever have a yard, I'm going to turn it all in the parking lot. Yeah, I mean, like, there's something to be said for just, like, cool gravel and a couple, maybe a couple trees that you don't have to do anything with, too. There's definitely something to be said for that. Um, just, like... Time to put more mulch down, because that's all I do here. Uh, but it, it's fine. I mean, you know, honestly, it's not hard to do this stuff. It was just that it was hot, and I didn't want to. That's the same thing of, like, the biking thing. It's like, I need exercise. Uh, the The problem the, the problem I'll face with, with riding the bike is that, like, it isn't really getting out of the house. It's getting exercise, but it's staying inside. And the walking slash biking was was meant also to like be a way for me to get out. But it's definitely safer. And theoretically, I'll be able to ride for longer because I will be doing... It'll be... Um, uh, because I, I won't be like... The, the, the sun won't be coming down on me. I'm getting like... I'm getting kind of tan. Get a little tan there. I mean, it's a farmer's tan, but like I'm getting color. I'm putting suntan lotion on, but still getting color. And I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. I think I'll still like, even if I'm doing indoor biking, I'll still like once a, w once or twice a week uh, supplement that with walking. Just like on days where I don't, maybe on days where I don't have streaming and I have a little more time to do stuff. Did I drop anything when I did that? Oh, no, I don't think I did. Okay. Um... Because some days are busier than others. I'll tell you. Uh, oh, it was actually... Uh, I haven't had a yard without a lawn service in years. But I still enjoyed driving the tractor when I visited my mom. And she asked me to run. Nice. On the back, back, back acre. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, if I had a tractor, that'd be maybe a different story. Also, if I only did it once in a while, that would definitely be a different story. Yeah, my my dad loves gardening. 
Uh, one day, uh, one of these days, I'll take a photo. Uh, for I regret getting a normal bike. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mr. Bob, uh, I have my dad's bike, but also he got for Christmas and never uses, so I'm thinking of digging it out and making it work. A uh, uh, contraption that basically turns it into a stationary bike. So I'm going to try that for exercise and see what I think of it. I don't know. I'm at least going to give it a try. Uh, so is this C20? Yeah, this is C16. Great. So we finished our legs. It's time to work on our waist. We'll take a pause for the cause in a little bit, but we got a little time before we get to that. Uh, so we'll just keep working here. Um, yeah, I uh, my dad loves gardening. One of these days I'll take a photo of uh, his tomatoes. He's getting little fun tomatoes that goes right in his salad, which is a nice little thing. Uh, does little cherry tomatoes. Um, but yeah, he loves gardening and doing all that. So I... I can't see him doing a lawn service, but it does mean that, like, in this particular weather, sometimes I get called into service. Oh, wait, this is on backwards. It's going to go like that. Great. All right. Uh, this doesn't have too much. The skirt doesn't seem to be too, like, flimsy, but it also doesn't, doesn't seem to be super functional. Uh... Which, sometimes I like it when it does stuff, but they don't have to. Um, but yeah, it is uh, it is hot out, and yeah, maybe, maybe that's like if I bike five days a week, walk two days a week. That seems like a reasonable uh, trade-off. That way I can still get outside, still get some air, see what's going on. Bug snacks. Damn it. Uh, sorry, I still have bug snacks. The bug snacks theme stuck in my head, as I said. Uh, it is in there. And it is not interested in leaving my brain. So anytime I'm thinking, just in the back of my brain, it's being like, hey, what about that? Um, so I'll mention in the pause for the cause, but I'll talk about it a little more here. Uh, I got a new video up because uh, it's Monday. So, uh, I put a new video out. In fact, I'm going to go retweet it because I haven't retweeted it for the night crowd. Usually I do that before the stream. I forgot. So, I will just go to my profile here on the old Twitter and retweet my tweet about Pat Bear's Anime Club, episode 22. Uh, what, do I, what do I use to find new anime? Um, can I just say... Do we actually think Bugs Nights will be a good video game? Octa was fun for 10 minutes, and that was about it. So, Epic Open World, uh, it may overstay its welcome. I really liked Octodad for a lot longer than, than you did. Um, uh, so, I do think that Bug... Now, now will Bug Snacks maybe be too long of a game? Will it maybe get, like, over... Like, maybe they'll add too much to it? That's totally possible. But... Until I, I don't know until I like put my hands on a controller and eat snacks, eat bugs that are snacks and, and see how that, that plays out and those combinations. Like, I think that'll be interesting. Um, but I, I can't tell you definitively this is going to be a good video game because I don't know. Uh, I hope it is. But I don't know. Uh, I yeah, I, I enjoyed Octodad a lot. I never finished Octodad, but I did enjoy my time with it. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Um, I hope uh, it's been their second game and not starting off as college project. There's good ch chance. Yeah, I mean also like there. This is like they're going for different things, right? This isn't Octodad two. So Octodad was about the difficulties of controlling it and the weirdness of it and I think this has a lot of that same weirdness but they're not going out of their way to make a game that's hard to play so that's good um, as far as I know I mean they might but as far as I know they are uh, so Pat Bear's Anime Club new episode I'll you know I'll link to it in the in the the break there but it's uh, I talk about uh, the websites I use to find out stuff like uh, ahead of time and then to find schedules 
Now, some people use uh, some websites to track like when things come out and they have wish lists and or watch lists, I should say, and they do all that. I still use a Google Doc. I have a Google Doc that like says the day of the show when it comes out. Uh, and then like as I'm previewing, I like add stuff of like, hey, this seems like a show that I'll watch next season. Like they've announced some October shows, like some of them were pushed back that were supposed to be out like um, – and uh, so I'll be able to be like, oh, OK, well, this seems good. I'll add this to the list. And, you know, and then I start checking to see, like, has any. Oh, the trailer showed up on Crunchyroll. So that's probably a Crunchyroll show. But they haven't said what day it comes out. Oh, but any chart. Basically, any chart is your thing. Um, any chart uh, and it hit airing and you can just find out what's up and what's out there right now. Uh, it's super helpful. Any chart is super helpful for that stuff. Uh, although if you hit the airing, you get a lot of stuff that isn't. They just list all the anime, so they list stuff that isn't currently uh, available that might not be currently available in the U.S. So you get stuff like the kids anime program Egg Car. Yo, I just wanted to say the name Egg Car in that video because it's a great name for an anime. It's called Egg Car. It's all capital letters. Egg Car. Uh, but like. That's not an anime that you can just watch in the U.S., so it's listed. And they also list a bunch of Chinese um, anime stuff, which, do, you know, uh, I don't think any Chinese animation project has had a U.S. dub. Uh, that one that was about the MMO guy uh, starting over uh, had uh, official releases on Tencent's website. Because Tencent was producing it, uh, their anim there's the studio that they own a, a chunk of was producing it, uh, and so I watched that, and that was pretty neat. Um, that was mostly a good translation. It was a little, little goofed here and there, but for the most part, it was a pretty good translation. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think and I don't think Crunchyroll or Funimation have ever picked up a Chinese a full on original Chinese production. Obviously there's, there's some Japanese stuff that's had uh, work done by Chinese studios. Often if you see really out of place, um, you know, tomorrow or Wednesday, whenever Gibante comes out episode two, that's definitely ch uh, influenced by uh, Chinese animation for all the monsters. By the way, I don't think that show's going to be great, but I'm going to keep watching because it's teasing me with cool minor characters, and I do like cool minor characters. Uh, uh, let's see. All right. We'll assemble this all together, and then we will take our pause for the cause, which because that's the time. Uh, I'm no anime expert, but it sounded like the Japanese government was big on getting business out of China. Uh, I have done um, no such investigations myself. I do not know that to be true or not. Um, uh, I mean, a lot of it is just uh, the, uh, the CG houses. Uh, so it's a lot of like, um, if you... Uh, Oh, yeah. So you you definitely I don't think you're going to see Chinese uh, stuff uh, through distributors. It would mostly be you're going to start seeing uh, people make deals uh, for some stuff. But uh, but yeah, no, that's totally fair. But, uh, you know, I do know that like a lot of shows. Uh, yeah, they're they're CG uh, monster stuff like um, Ari Fuerta. Uh, uh, oh, uh I forget the name of the uh, Infinite Dendogram. Um, uh, I'm the eighth son. Are you kidding me? Like the monsters you see in that are usually done by out of studio, uh, um, out of house like studios, you know, often in, in China for that. So if that if that trend changes, my hope is that that trend changes be and the art style meshes better. Because my big thing is, Ari Fuerta, like just. Anytime monsters showed up, it just looked bad. It just looked so bad. And like, luckily, in Eighth Sun, there weren't a lot of those dragons. There were some, but there weren't a lot of them. But, oof. 
uh, oof the doof. Uh, but then you watch like Wise Man's Grandchild, and like there are monsters and stuff, but it's all the same animation, and I think it just blends really well uh, and and looks good. All right, so we're gonna put this together, and then we are gonna put uh, we're gonna uh, uh, work on our uh, our weapons, and uh, I think that. I can't imagine these weapons, because there's only a couple of them. I can't imagine these weapons are going to take the rest of the stream. So we might uh, start uh, the Lego set, which was bought anonymously. I still don't know who bought that, but somebody bought a Lego set on my wish list. And uh, uh, that's up deck, an ice cream truck. That's on deck. So I uh, actually don't have that prepped uh, for the images. So, okay. Ah, uh, water cooler talk. Looks a lot like bongs now. <laughs> uh, water cooler tanks look a lot like bongs. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so. Uh, we are body complete here, so it is time to take a pause for the cause. Thank you so much for watching the stream right now. I'm going to throw uh, over here to uh, the intro uh, thing. Uh, thank you very much for watching the stream. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I'm going to talk for a couple minutes. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to the stream, uh, I'm going to chat very briefly about uh, ways you can support the channel. If you're so inclined, you are no obligation to do so. Uh, first and foremost, if you're currently a subscriber, throw the bear cave, the Lego, the Scythe mode if you're a tier two, because there's a couple tier twos of you out there. I appreciate that very much. But also uh, folks that use their uh, Twitch Prime coin, because they have their Amazon Prime synced up with their Twitch Prime, and they get some rewards. They're weird rewards, but maybe you use those. But mostly, uh, sometimes it's free games, but mostly it means that you get a token you can use instead of uh, giving $5. And I get the same cut of it, which is pretty neat. Um, so if you would like to do that, you're more than welcome to. Uh, being a subscriber just means, you know, you're, you're throwing me a couple bucks a month, and I appreciate it very much. Um, uh, again, I'm going to go through ways you can support the channel if you'd like, and I will try to keep those uh, as brief as possible because uh, I know that, you know, you want to see me uh, build some cool weapons on this kit, uh, and I want to do that too. Uh, so I'll just talk about, uh, let's see. Uh, I have a Patreon you could join if $5 a month through uh, uh, using Twitch isn't up your alley. You want to do, you want to support me a different way? My Patreon. $1 tier, $3 tier, $5 tier, $10 tier. The tiers. There are different tiers and you get different rewards. Uh, this kit was chosen by a poll that I ran for my $10 patrons. My $5 patrons and also my $10 get videos a day early. So on Sunday, they got my anime video. They could have watched that. that. Uh, they'll get an archive of this tonight instead of the YouTube archive going up tomorrow for everybody else. Um, uh, there's a, a q and I do monthly that is exclusive to my patrons. Uh, so for the one dollar and the three dollar, and the three dollar, uh, they just you know you give me a little extra, and then once a month you choose what I do on my bonus. So last week I did Twitch things because uh, the three dollar, five dollar, ten dollar voted for Twitch things. So that's all that is. Um, occasionally I'll I'll put up a poll more than once a month for my three dollar patrons. Uh, so we'll see if we do that. So that's my Patreon. Uh, it's a little more flexible than this. Um, you also could directly. Uh, uh, donate monies, um, which goes to me buying model kits and equipment. Uh, so that that is a way to support me as a one-time thing through my coffee, my Streamlabs, or my PayPal goes to me buying kits and equipment. Um, because unlike playing a video game and, you know, like, ah, oh, I, well, I have this c computer and I, or, you know, whatever, and I bought this game and I'm going to play it all the time, like I'm playing Valorant and that's the game I play or Hearthstone or whatever, like I got to keep buying kits. Uh, that is the uh, obvious and also terrible thing about doing this. Um, so any little bit helps and I appreciate that. But also you don't have to do any of that. If you don't want to, we'll get uh, through the, I also have a wish list. Um, so my Lego set that I'm going to be starting next was bought off my wish list. I've got uh, high grade kits here. I've got uh, Lego sets, real grades, um, some uh, paper craft, some glue kits, all kinds of different stuff is in here. At the very bottom of my wish list uh, are new snipper clips. Uh, these are okay, but I put in some Tamiyas that look really good, uh, the side cutters. Uh, and then also 
Uh, I put a seat cushion thing. Uh, it is a car seat cushion, but it will work just fine on this. But uh, uh, all, or for an office chair, really, because uh, my chair is not super comfortable, and it's okay for two hours, but it's not great. So I put that in there. And if you're like Pat, I would buy you a kit, but not from Amazon. I don't want to. I get it. Well, you could buy a gift card from USA Gundam Store. You buy a gift card, you send me the code, because it gives you code in your email, and then you go to my uh, Twitter and send me a DM or a whisper on Twitch. That's another way to do it. And then you're like, hey, I sent these things. Uh, 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 here's a code. Buy something. I might use it to pre-order something. I might use it to just buy a kit. But it might go towards something with some other money. Uh, that's another way to support me. If you're so interested, you're under no obligation to do so. Obviously, uh, I have a Discord. Now, that's the thing I'd love you to join because it's free. Join my Discord. Uh, it's pretty chill. People post photos of things they're working on. I post photos of things I'm working on. A reminder to my folks here in chat, if there's something that you haven't, you know, if you've been like, oh, I should post that thing. I finished that kit. Please do. It's awesome to see what you're working on. Um, it's just nice. Uh, all right. Uh, last week I did, uh, bearing the list, I did uh, WWE Champions from 2009 to 2019. It's a long video. Uh, some people disagreed. Uh, particularly my, you know, there, there are some supporters out there of people I'm not a supporter of. And that's fine. Um, and then I mentioned this earlier, Pat Bears Anime Club. This episode 22 is all about the tools I use. Uh, it's something I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, and I also wanted to wait a little bit before I did my, like, what am I watching this season? Because I want to give, like, I didn't want to make this video... Uh, if I if I there's been shows that have only had one episode like Gibbete Gibbete or whatever it's called uh, there's only had one episode so I was like well I want to I want to give this a little bit more before I uh, I put that video out so my next video will probably be like what am I watching in the summer season uh, what is it yeah because it's uh you know like I want to check out a few other shows um, and get a few more percent so I put this one up which I think is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to drink a little water, and then we will get back to building and get some anime talk in. Ah, water. It's pretty good. All right, let's go back to the seltzer here, and we will uh, we will work on uh, our weapons. So you see, we got our seltzer here, body complete, our cool arm go, ready to go. Let's build our weapons, which is the sh the shield uh, gun, and then uh, the lance. Pretty easy stuff to put together, but we'll put those together now. We're gonna need a lot of A2 and A1 here, so we'll get that going. Uh, and then I'll talk about some uh, anime. Uh, this episode of One Piece, pretty fucking sweet. You know, I'm I'm not super into. Uh, Big Mama with uh, memory loss, uh, who like has regressed to the mind of a ch herself as a child. Uh, I'm not super into this particular part of the storyline, so I'm like, okay, sure, Lin Lin, sure, sure, cool, cool, whatever. But that was very brief in this episode, so that was good um, because most of this episode uh, we saw Luffy fighting, and that was cool. Um, it's so nice to see Luffy fighting uh, with being able to use his powers. Now, his whole fight right now is he is um, he just kind of remembered that Rayleigh, the guy that trained him into using all his cool hockey abilities, um, that Rayleigh like had this ability that he's never ha that that Luffy's never used, and he's like, ah, how do he do that? So he's like trying to figure that out in this like death game that he's part of, which is. People are like, oh, well, no, these guys are going to just lose to Luffy really fast. Like, it's not a big deal. So he's just, like, using it as a training exercise, which is pretty neat. Uh, um, so, Blue. Hi, Blue. Uh, I have not seen Japan Sinks on Netflix. I, I currently do not have Netflix, so I have not seen it. So I cannot give you any commentary except to say, when I have Netflix again which will be probably for a series that I want a marathon that comes out. Um, when I get that again, I will certainly check out 
uh, Japan 6 because that seems interesting. Uh, it's a bummer, but I guess that's the point. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, there are there are some shows that are that are meant to just be like, hey, let's be sad. This, let's look at this beautiful anime and be sad. That is that is a thing. Uh, it is a trope. All right, so we got our lance here, which is pretty neat. So that's that. Uh, so we'll put that over there, and then we'll work on that. Um, but most of this episode of One Piece was about uh, some shit that Zoro's doing. We get to see Zoro fight against someone competent and someone like outstanding. There's the guy that sold that stole his sword because he believes that uh, uh, um, that Zoro was the one that stole it, and he's kind of right, but not really, because uh, there's a whole thing because uh, it was stolen for the zombified body of the guy that owned it. And basically, Zoro's just like, I only have two swords, and this kind of sucks. I wish I had three swords. I feel a little naked without my third sword, which is like a bummer for him. But then also an assassin shows up that's going to try to kill that laughing girl who's really fucking annoying. Goddamn laughing girl. Uh, so Zoro's just like immediately like, yeah, I'm going to help a lady and a kid. What do you think? Who do you think I am? Of course I'm going to help them out. But now he's got two people that like want to fight him and then he was already having trouble with one and he doesn't have all his, you know, his weapons. So Zoro's definitely in some fucking trouble. He's not like locked up in a jail and trying to figure out how to escape trouble like Luffy, but he's definitely like not in a good way. Uh, but yeah, One Piece pretty dang exciting pretty dang exciting I will say uh was pretty happy to see that and uh looking forward to more cool fighting action coming we'll see what happens but yeah uh overall the action's real good right now and I am uh pleased to be watching it so okay goes like this um Ninja Collection. Uh, Ninja Collection is uh, the uh, the Japanese ghost stories. Uh, it's a spin-off of that. Um, I will say this. So far, there's only been two episodes, and we have seen two of the ninjas. They have not done any ninja shit. They are... Basically, it looks like some bad stuff is going to happen, and some people are going to die or get messed up. And then it doesn't happen. It's like five minutes or four minute episodes and they're weird looking. Uh, I know some people, oh, they just hate the art style. They can't stand the art style. I don't mind it. It's this like jilted kind of odd like frames are missing uh, thing that I think looks kind of cool and works with it. But basically this episode, a girl is freaked out. Uh, she is like, uh, at work and there's some terrifying stuff going on and definitely she's going to get murdered, but then she's not murdered because the annoying guy that, that was offering to help her turns out to be one of our, uh, shinobi that is fighting the dark elements. I don't know. Look, as again, I can't say this is a cool anime. You should watch this anime. I will say they're very short and kind of weird and I'm not hating it. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's good, but I don't think that it's bad. I don't know if it's bad. I don't think it's great. I haven't decided if it's good. That That's what I'll say about that. I think that's the best I can say is... So far, it is not a bad anime, but I definitely don't like one of the reasons I'm watching it is like, I just, there's not a lot for me to watch right now that I want to check out. So, uh, I'm watching what I can because there just isn't a lot out there, uh, on a, on a Sunday, Monday schedule. Like basically I've got three shows. So now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of Pat Bear talking about anime that just came out. 
because let's talk about uh, the turn that happened in today's God of High School. Uh, cause, hey, what the fuck? Shit got weird. So, shit's been weird, right? There was like some, in the first episode, there was some guys got murdered by an invisible giant hand. Like, that was weird. Uh, in the second episode, one of the guys that was fighting suddenly had this like incredible aura, this black aura around him and like kind of like was using a thing and referenced this like fighting energy that hadn't been referenced before. There's uh, there's like nanobot technology to heal people in this tournament, like whatever. Like it's clear this tournament is also like not what it seems. Okay, we already knew there was some strange stuff and there. there's some science fiction stuff and then there was some like battle aura stuff that seemed a little odd. But then, uh, the ep this episode started with some sort of cult. And I don't know if this cult is directly the people that are running this thing or if it is not related directly or if it's like they're going to take advantage of what's going on or they're a separate thing. But there was like a cult thing and that was weird. And then um, we saw some fights. Uh, what's up? We're talking about uh, um, the God High School. Um, uh, there were some very good fights. Uh, we saw all our friends won. Um, uh, we, we started, uh, with, uh, Mora, I believe her name is, uh, our martial arts, um, uh, person, uh, that uses, uh, that uses a sword. She uses a boken that wants to eventually, uh, reopen her father's uh, sword focused martial arts school and she fought a, uh, a wrestler and my only thing about this episode that I did not enjoy happened and I'm going to go on a mini rant but it, I promise you this rant will be a mini one and let me just say stop pretending that pro wrestling is real anime because there was his her opponent was this like blonde women's champion wrestler from America, but it was very clear that she was a pro wrestling champion. And yes, did she use suplexes? Yes. Was she like skilled in that thing? Yeah. But she was like, you build your uh, your body for iron, like iron as a wrestler. And it was like, no, you don't. You take acting classes and you learn maneuvers and you go through training and it hurts and it hurts, but it's staged. And I hate when that shows up in anime because they're like, yes, this is a fantastical show where the, the martial arts are, you know, completely like nonsense in some ways, nonsensical. And it's it's all whatever. But like, just make them MMA fighters. If they made her an MMA fighter, then it would have been fine. But they made her a pro wrestler. And then you have to suspend your disbelief that pro wrestling is real. And it's like. Uh, especially when what happened later in the episode happens, the thing that takes me out of the reality shouldn't be that you're pretending that pro wrestling is like the same as other martial arts as martial arts, I should say. So that kind of bummed me out. And, and then, uh, the guy who reads books and uses a baseball bat fought the karate dude that we like. We, we got a backstory, some more backstory about our karate friend that uh, he is entering this tournament for money for a friend of his. Uh, he works a lot of odd jobs to to basically uh, fund his treatments. We don't know what illness, but he's got treatments, and uh, there he's he's been raising funds, and that's why he is in this tournament. Uh, we we knew that someone was sick, and that's why he was doing what he was doing. But now we know specifically that that person that is sick is like a, a, a childhood friend or something. So that's why he is doing what he does. Um, and, you know, overall, you know, it's just like a cool dude doing cool shit. Try to help out. You love to see it. Uh, but he wins his fight against the guy who reads it. He's basically like, I've if you study your opponent's martial arts styles, you know what they do. And then, so he's like, that's his thing. Is like, well, I've read a lot about about what people do. So now I can use uh, what I've learned 
to beat them up, and that's like how he's fought so well. But turns out, if that doesn't stack up to guts and determination like our dude has, which our dude does have, uh, so our karate guy wins. And then uh, there is a punishment that had to happen with because last week uh, Jin, our main character, got involved uh, uh, in a match that he was not supposed to be involved in. And the punishment is that he's got to fight one of the event organizers. And the event organizers are very strong. I mean, they, you know, that's why they're not competing is because they are apparently very strong. Uh, and he whoops that dude's butt. He like completely destroys this guy instantly. What anime is this? Oh, um, uh, fish. I'm talking about God of high school. It is uh, Crunchyroll uh, is producing it. It is um, based on a webtoon. Um, so uh, it is the second one based on a webtoon that is out. Uh, and it is, it's in its third episode. Uh, it is a tournament fighting uh, series, but there is more to meets the eye, which I'm about to get into. So the reason why Jin can just like completely body this guy uh is that uh, this guy gets bodied so easily by Jin because Jin ate some fruits that the event organ one of the event organizers gave him, which he looked like he died. It looked like he died, and then he has some powers, but he doesn't have like we don't know what's going on. But here's the thing: so he humiliates the dude uh, who works for the organization. And then that dude, some sort of monster with a scythe comes out of that guy, like an apparition, like a ghost or an avatar. And so that's a thing in this world, apparently, which I was unaware of. That is just a thing that can happen in this world, apparently. You can just have uh, that. And I was like, what is going on with this anime? So, yeah. Uh, there's some supernatural shit in this anime now, and I didn't know that was a thing, so that was weird. Uh, all right, so we got we got our weapons here. We're gonna take some photos with our various weapons, uh, and then we'll do a photo without the weapons. Uh, I gotta see if I can get this thing here. There it is. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, look, I think this anime is really good. Uh, the, the fight animation, even if the story so far, I'm like, I don't know what's going on with this show. I don't know why this is happening. What, why is there like this demonic force? I mean, of course there is a demonic force in this show, but why is there a demonic force in the show? I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I will say the fight choreography is fantastic and just looks incredible. Um, this show looks just so cool, uh, and I think it's very fluid, uh, and they're going for something, but I think the fights in this tournament so far have been great. Okay, so this is what this thing looks like with its lance and its gun. So I'm going to take a photo of this, and then I will take a photo of it in a different way. I want to take two photos of this kit, but we're done with the Seltzer. That was an easy, that was a pretty quick build. We, we started it. On Saturday, we're done today. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, God of High School is probably the thing I like the most this season so far. Let's we'll take a quick look. See. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Nightwing Mist Hawk is now following. Thank you very much, Nightwing Mist Hawk. Welcome, welcome, um, welcome to the stream. We just finished a model kit. We're going to work on a, a Lego set next. Um, so I'm going to take the photo like this, and then we will just have it so you can see this big arm, and then right there. Um, yeah, I'm looking at what I've got here. Uh, Uzaki-chan wants to hang out is fun, and I will say I was I'm pleasantly surprised about the choices that have been made with. Um, uh, in the in the last episode of what show did I what show? Oh, um, 
uh, the Misfit of Demon Lord Academy, uh, Demon King Academy, whatever it is. Uh, I'm actually pleasantly surprised about that show uh, because it is a lot more about the supporting characters than I thought it would be. It's very much about the supporting characters, um, and that is for better. Uh, so I do think that's pretty rad because I, I was not expecting that. Uh, that it would be so much focused on that. So that's cool. Uh, oops. That's... All right, we're going to take one more photo of this. Uh, the biggest difference today from, from other PC builds is I got sweatbands. Hell yeah. This is a game changer. Heck yeah. Sweatbands are great for stuff like that. Um, I started wearing bandanas because I shaved my head and suddenly sweat was pouring down my face because I did not have hair to absorb the sweat. Uh, so I started wearing bandanas for that and having a bandana when you're sweating a lot, real good. I highly recommend if you're a sweater, a person who sweats, not a sweater vest or anything like that. Um, bandanas, pretty good. Sweatbands, pretty good. All right, so we're, I'm gonna take one more photo of this kit and then we're gonna move on uh, I thought that this would take the rest of the stream. Uh, we have some time left in the stream, but I really thought that this was going to take the rest of it. So I did not, I am not prepared here fully. Um, I can get prepared. You just have to give me a second. So I'm going to, uh, I got to get up. So I'm just going to hit the be right back, but I can reach it while still having, uh, my mic on. So I can still talk to y'all while I do this part, which is to walk over here and get this Lego set and get this here, move this there, come back over here, still talking. And now I can uh, come back here. So I got a Lego set. So we'll just, uh, let's see, we gotta take this out. You go away and then we will add image which we'll just call ice cream we got an ice cream we'll just do that find my image which is going to be and we're doing our first uh, Lego stream here in this apartment which is cool and then this is of course a giant huge file because why wouldn't it be giant and huge and then we'll just put this like this for now yeah and then we'll just minimize it to there. Great. Perfect. Look at that. We're working on, yeah, th this is an ice cream truck. It's a 200 piece kit. Should be a nice, easy build. Uh, ice cream truck. Woo. Indeed. Right. Someone bought this on my wish list. I don't know who did. Thank you to the anonymous person that put this together uh, or put who picked this off my wish list. I still got a few Lego sets on my wish list. Um, but yeah, it's got a cool dog. I uh, got this. Look at this ice cream. I can't wait to put that decal on there. Um, Got a person working the ice cream truck. It says uh, only the best on it. It's going to be a fun little kit. Um, I got my brick separator. T tool of the trade, indeed. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of put this together. Nice little booklet here. Got some pieces. Lots of decals. Look at all these decals. Look at all these decals. I'll put that up there. Put this on there. I'm going to... Actually, put this. I'm going to use my, uh, to help that, because it's got a bend in it. It'll just be annoying. I'll put my uh, soundboard on there to flatten it out. But yeah, we got some bags here with some pieces. We've got two books of instructions. I hate this. Just give me one book. The box is a good size. This didn't need to go this way. Lego, you could have given me two books. I understand the two bags, fine, whatever you want to do. You don't want to do that, sure. But, like, give me, just do one, just do one bag, just do one instruction book. This isn't, a, like, a multi thing here. Uh, the That NES kit looks great, though I saw how many don't uh, realize how expensive the bigger Lego kits are. Lord Crashton. So here's the thing. If it was just the NES, that might be a reasonably priced kit. But clearly that is not just the NES. That is the TV and all this other stuff. 
Uh, and then there are a lot of people out there that don't know about the um, the tax you're paying, which you know used to be called the Star Wars tax, and is just uh, folks know just means when you have to buy something uh, that is uh, when when you're picking up something that is uh, a very unique, and you know, and they're paying they're paying a licensing fee, and then they're pushing that fee on to you, the consumer, picks up that fee. So, yeah, it is often called the Star Wars tax uh, correctly because it is uh, expensive. <laughs> Shit's expensive. Look at this cool dog. Look at this cool dog. Look at this cool dog. Got a cool dog. Put that cool dog over there. Got to build, a, gotta build that cool dog a skateboard at some point. So, yeah, I'm right now... Uh, do you think Star Trek will ever come to Lego? So, uh, the scrolling action on TV makes it worth it. Yes, yeah, Bird, I think that rules. So, I would love it. That actually was a question that someone set up, like, what kits, what licensed properties do you wish would come to Lego? And my number one was Star Trek. Star Trek, I know, has done some stuff with, like, not with Lego, but they've done some things. Uh, I don't know. I actually wonder if there's, like, you know, behind the scenes things where people are like, no, you picked Star Trek, so you can't do that. Uh, because, but I don't, I, that's just me wondering out loud. I actually don't know if that's true. So we're at Noling right now, folks. If you haven't been here on a, uh, a Bill with Bear stream, uh, Noling is just, uh, is just putting all your things out and organizing them for photography is where Noling came from. Uh, like, oh, here are all the pieces, uh, for this. Uh, build that we're going to put together and we're just going to sort them and it is a way to sort things we are doing it by color um, you could then further do stuff like to organize by like doing like this where you're just like oh, okay well I got it out and now I'm like just separating the pieces and kind of like stacking them so they're easy to find so now I'm like well I need a dark gray well I come over here to dark gray and I need a one by six okay well I got a stack of one by sixes nice and easy um yeah, I don't know, Lashbrook. I mean, they've done, you know, I'll say this. The Star Wars play, uh, you know, stuff, it's possible. They've got really good people, you know, working on stuff. And there are people who've done their own, uh, certainly. Uh, I would blame it all on CBS. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I like I said, I don't, I don't have an answer for you. I can't necessarily comment on my thoughts on that because I don't like know I would love it if they did I think Star Trek would be great I'd like to see a few more video games come in you know the, I think the Overwatch stuff uh, worked out really well and looks really good uh, I've built some of the Overwatch gear on this stream uh, in fact and I really enjoyed it I thought I thought it was like really fun uh, to put that stuff together so I, I would like to see more of that if possible but I don't know all right, so we're going to put this here. I think this is... I don't know what this is. We'll put that in the... There's not a lot of this color section. Uh, put it on there, because we got to build some people. I think these are ice cream tops. Yeah, these are ice cream tops, so we'll just put those there. Um, uh, Lego Metroid. Lego Metroid could be interesting, yeah. Um, you know, the, the Mega Constructs uh, Pokemon are, are very fun. So, uh, but I also think Lego Pokemon could be great. I mean, I feel like that probably won't happen because of all the make constructs, but uh, that certainly could be cool. Uh, all right, so we got to put this another topping thing here. I like to put the stuff that only has like a couple pieces uh, or color together because then I'm like, oh, wait, that's that weird. This is a weird looking color. So it's probably this. We got the money. Ooh, a a hundred dollars for ice cream, hundred dollar bill. How much ice cream are you buying? Uh, ask Brad if you can get Lego Star Trek going. Yeah, yeah, Lord Grosjean. That that I'll get right on that. Like, hey, Br hey, Brad. Uh, what's up with Lego? You got you got you got inroads on Star Trek for me. You can make this happen. Um, but yeah, uh. That kit looks cool. I'm probably never going to get it, but it does look cool. Uh, I think it's neat. Uh, anything but Funko Pops, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, so I talked about recent anime stuff. I'm happy to talk about recent anime stuff. Uh, that was fun. Um, uh, I am uh, currently submitting a panel for a online convention that will be me talking about anime with some guests. Uh, hopefully that will get picked up. I believe it will be, but who knows? Because uh, I think that would be really fun. And uh, it will hopefully feature somebody who has not been on one of my panels ever before. Because since it's digital, they can do it. Because they don't go to PAX. Oops, I told you it was PAX. I'm submitting I'm submitting uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club yelling about the shows we like. Which I did uh, for the first time ever as a live panel at PAX East this year. Uh, I am submitting it again for PAX uh, Online. Which is the digital PAX. Uh... And so, because I think that will work out very good. Uh, I have an idea for another thing that I might submit. I still have to decide. Uh, submissions are due on Friday. Um, so, I have another idea. Uh, basically, I don't want to do anything that involves, uh, like, audio and video as much as, or as little as possible. Basically, so this version of uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, if it gets approved, um, will be... Uh, um, a version where I have uh, where instead of having videos play we'll have like animated GIFs and photos but I just want to make sure that I'm not dealing with it with like lag for anybody or also balancing four people's micro myself and three other people's microphone stuff I feel like that's going to be enough of an issue without having to also ba balance audio from uh, a uh, various video sources whereas you if you are doing uh it live then you have you have a technician doing it which i would not have so uh all right so we got a kid here we got our uh our kid uh with his ice cream and we're gonna build his skateboard uh so we'll put this on here now apparently oh uh Zenalon just subscribed which is prime that's 14 months i'm sorry that didn't, it didn't appear. Uh, oh, uh, I bet I know why. Streamlabs needs to go there. Uh, but thank you so much. Let's throw the barricade log of the Scythe emote in the chat. Thanks, Zenalon, for renewing for 14 months. Thank you so much, my friend. And I'll hit the old applause there on the soundboard. Thank you very much. Sorry that the pop-up didn't show up. It just didn't. Uh, so we got this kid on a skateboard. Now... We want to have this kid have his helmet, but if we don't want him to have his helmet, he can put on some hair. He can just have hair. He's got some curly hair. But we want him to wear his helmet because safety first. He's on a skateboard. Got to put a helmet on. Kid, what do you do? What are you, what are you thinking, kid? Uh, and then we'll build our uh, ice cream attendant here. She's only got one expression happy. She doesn't have sad expression. And our dog doesn't need anything. Our dog is just our dog. But I would say, Pat Bear would recommend that y'all don't eat ice cream while riding a skateboard. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We'll put these right over here. We'll get them back in for our build. But we'll get some building done. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, I'm submitting that for PAX Online. Uh, yelling about the shows we love. Uh, so, uh, Jimothy, we did, uh, unfortunately finish up the gunplay that we were working on, uh, during the stream. About 15 minutes or so ago, we finished, uh, our gunplay. I need to actually edit, uh, that we are doing a, uh, a Lego set right now. We're doing, a Lego, uh, ice cream truck because, uh, we finished up. Uh, that's uh, the Selton. Uh, I can show you to you. It's right here. It's a cool, uh, model kit. Uh, but yeah, we finished that up. So now we are working on a Lego ice cream truck. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we just finished this cool, weird nonsense thing. And, uh, we do build, you know, uh, this stream. I mostly do model kits, but I like doing Lego as well. Um, but we, yeah, we built this very fun kit. I'll put it over there. Uh, good luck, Mr. Bob, with that motherboard. Get that motherboard in. Make sure the motherboard stands are all in there and you got raised and everything's going to go in good. 
good luck to you, my friend. But yeah, uh, we're moving on to work on a uh, an ice cream truck, which is always fun to kind of mix things and match. Uh, we did the bat sub a couple weeks ago before I, uh, when I was at the Airbnb, and that was the first set we did for a long time. Yeah, watch the stack glitches, indeed. Gotta look out. Um, but we, yeah, uh, I hadn't done Lego for a while before that bat sub. It'd been a, it'd been a, a hot minute. Uh, they slowed down production this year for obvious reasons. Um, and also, uh, there was a run on Lego, which also for obvious reasons. That people were like, hey, you know what? What if we got some Lego for the apartment or the house? Hey, you know what? It would be a good fun activity to do. Let's build some Lego. Hey, let's stop looking at the internet and build some Lego. Like, it all makes sense. It It's all good ideas. But it did mean that Lego was art. I got back into Gunpla during lockdown. Heck yeah. Uh, like how puzzles were shown. Yes, pu there was a run on puzzles because people were just looking for activities, especially activities, p pl places that have, you know, a kid or multiple kids. Yeah, and I, I know there was a run on, uh, on Gunpla. Um... And especially when, uh, for Amazon, but then especially when some of these stores started to come back a bit. Uh, uh, yes, N Nintendo Switches, there was a huge run, especially with Animal Crossing coming out. Like, that became uh, an obvious choice for people to, like, oh, that's a thing I could do. Yeah, I mean, it was just, like, entertainment, stuff like that, like... Uh, and then also, not just for entertainment purposes, but for communications, you know, related somewhat, webcams. It became very hard to find webcams. Uh, because people were like, oh, I guess I got to get one of those. <laughs> I'm tired of using the one built into my laptop, or I don't have one at all. And then, uh, yeah, and then headset microphones uh, were uh, hot for a little hot minute there. Uh Oh, uh, I still can't get a Logitech webcam without paying a huge markup. Yeah, I luckily have these because I've been model kit building for a while, so that made it easier. Um, uh, and uh, Mr. Bob says, the case comes ready for ATX board and built on IO Shield. Hell yeah. Good on you, Mr. Bob. Working hard. Uh, yeah, so this is a 200-piece kit, so this will be a pretty quick build. Uh, we'll definitely, I'm definitely going to have to put a poll out for Thursday uh, for my, uh, uh, my, as I said, my $10 patrons, uh, patreon.com slash pet bear, um, vote on what I build next. If it's something for my wish list, stuff for my wish list always gets priority over stuff that I have in my backlog, but I have three high grades ready for me to build that would and one of those will be built after this is done uh ooh, i'm gonna get so we you can use you can use the brick separator as a uh applicator of the wedge you can use the wedge to apply decals if you want but since i have uh spongers because these are great tools to have for Gunpla. Always recommend tweezers and some different kinds of spongers uh, and wedges uh, so you're not using your snipper clips to try to remove pieces if you messed up. Uh, and uh, so, let's see. Just make sure that looks right. Yeah, okay. That step looks right. Yeah, okay, great. Um. So if you can use a uh, the wedge part of a sponger to apply stickers, I always recommend that. Uh, we got to put a license plate on here. And as always, there is so much give with decals. You really can uh, fix your mistakes. So uh, I always like that. But we'll just kind of try to center this. This. Um, I can go a little bit closer. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm not trying to get perfect. Uh, go. Let's see. Uh, 
Yeah, I think some things are coming back into stock, like and have been for the past few months, as also as other stores come up and international shipping kind of returns to some sort of normalcy. Um, some of these things are going to come back. You're going to start seeing them again. Uh, but like office chairs, like comfy, like gaming chairs and office chairs, like those are going to take forever to like really come back because they only make so many of them. Uh, and people, I think a lot of people are just like, well, this is the chair I have in my apartment. It's good enough. And once they started working from home consistently, they were like, this is not good enough. Uh, all those comfy chairs at people's work that they couldn't go and get. I know a few people that did that though. When they're, if you know, if they were in an area where their offices hadn't closed down yet, and they were like, uh, "I'm gonna get a car and I'm gonna get this chair in this car." Let's see. I have a couple friends that work on a Showtime show that is animated. Um, that they're still able to, they're working, but, uh, basically a, uh, an assistant had to go and pick up laptops, uh, or sorry, desktop computers and drive them around to editors because they wanted to still be able to edit the shows and they were able to do that, but they had to go and get the actual computers to do that and like deliver them based like contact those delivery. Be like, Hey, I draw, Hey, I'm outside. I've got the computer from work. Here you go, because people were running into issues working on stuff on their home, you know, PCs. Uh, again, uh, for years, a balance ball while working from home. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've never tried sanding desks. I've never tried the the balance ball thing. Um, I. My last chair, which was inherited when my roommate left, was actually very nice. His chair was good. It was a nice, very comfortable chair. The gaming chair I had before that was good. It wasn't remarkable, but it was good. Uh, this is just a, this is just a chair. Uh, it's not comfortable. Uh, it's got a little like, that's what I said. My Amazon wish list has a, a butt pad on it because this is just not great. Uh, so I was like, well, maybe if somebody wants to give me a butt pad, they could. Uh, obviously, they don't, nobody has to. That's all stuff. Uh, I wish I had a standing desk with a nice pad under my feet that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I've never tried that. Uh, I stood for work a lot back in the days where I was, uh, uh, you know, working at a theater at night. Like, sometimes I'll sit down. Uh, you have a Secret Labs chair. $400. It's a bit overrated, but it's still nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, um, yeah, definitely at work, like, I would sit, but I would also a lot of times stand because I had to move around and stuff like that, and that eventually, uh, I started, like, bringing, like, I was just like, hey, buy me a stool. <laughs> I need, like, a tall padded stool. Because I... They were like, oh, we got a chair in there. And it's like, yeah, but I can't use that while I work. So I'm just like, while there are shows going on. So I'm just sitting in it between shows. But I'm not really doing that because between shows, I'm going and getting stuff set up for the next show. So I need something comfortable so I'm not standing. And other employees had an option that way, which was nice. Uh, all right. So we got that going. Uh only the best. Only the best ice cream. Uh, and uh, we will continue this kit. And we're going to go for it. We got a little time left in the stream. Which is good. Monday night stream. I don't got places to be. I got to upload this for, you know, whatever. And, whatever, and we'll find out. Uh, we are going to raid in a couple minutes. We'll, we'll I'll pick a raid. Uh, a part of somebody to go and check out. Uh, a streamer. Uh um, you know, somebody that's doing something, maybe, uh, maybe they're playing a game that I think we fun for us to look at. Uh, rarely at this time of night, do I find, uh, build streamers. Most of the time it's just like variety streamers or people that I like, but also have really cool communities and are fun people. I was looking at a motorized sit stand desk with a treadmill attachment. Jeez, dirty. Uh, but then I was like, 
who am I trying to impress and decided to be lazy with a balance ball instead. Hey, that's the treadmill attachment. That's that's ambitious. Yeah, that's an ambitious uh, idea right there. It's being like, yeah, you know, I just I got a treadmill at my desk. Yeah, forget that. Um, all right, so put that there. And then we'll put this here. But yeah, we will continue this uh, on Thursday. My next build stream, Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. I do have a bonus stream on Wednesday. If you're around Wednesday night at 9 p.m., I'm going to play Hearthstone again. Did I play Hearthstone a couple weeks ago? Yes. Am I playing it now? Yes. Do I have a new deck that is complete and utter nonsense that should not be played in any format? Uh, 100%. Uh, I saw it for in standard with King Pharos. I adapted it to wild because there are more cards in wild for to play. But basically, how this deck works is this is a, this is a good one. So there's a four mana cost card, right? If you have eight cards in your hand, you draw a minion, and that minion costs five less mana. So you build a deck with only uh, spell cards, except for one minion, which is King Pharos. What does King Pharos do? King Pharos, its battle cry is, when you play it, it puts uh, out um, random minions that cost the same as spells in your hand. And it's randomized which ones, so like, it only could put out six minions, but if you have seven ma uh, spell cards, it'll put out whatever, the equivalent. It costs 10, ma 10 mana. So you put you put King Pharos in your deck. You don't draw King Pharos before you can draw that four cost card whose name I can't remember off the top of my head because I just put this deck together. So you play that and the next card you get is a five cost. So then on turn five, you, on turn five, you have this giant swing where you hopefully had eight mana cost cards. Uh... And you make sure you don't put in the 8 mana cost card that costs less depending on how many minions you have because that actually affects it, which is nonsense. Um, and then if you accidentally uh, pull the card you need or you don't pull the card you need because you need also need to have that card on turn 4 uh, to make this combo work. So if you don't get that card, uh, you have a thing that just changes your deck completely. You have two... There are four cards that just... There's one that changes your hand into... Random demons that all get plus one, plus one. So that's a good, weird, nonsense card. And then there's another uh, set that uh, our card that uh, um, completely gives you uh, a random class and class cards from that class. Uh, and they all cost one less. So you put those in there as a backup. Those are your other backups. And you need those other backups because your deck is bad. So I'm going to play that a bunch on Wednesday because it's a bad deck and I shouldn't be playing it. And I shouldn't have ever... My record is probably like 3-9 and nine or something, but those three wins should not have happened because it's not a good deck, as I said. It is a bad deck, but it is a fun deck to play. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll play that on Wednesday. That's on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Because I do a bonus stream every week, and that's what this bonus streak, uh, stream is. Streak. This bonus stream is that, and then on uh, Thursday, continuing this kit, uh, we'll do one more step here. We'll put these on here, and then we're going to call it quits, and I'm going to go find a stream for us to raid. And I'm... Uh, uh, does Hearthstone do stuff with technology and physical? Oh yeah, Mr. Bob. The there's because it's built because Hearthstone was built on the ground up to be a digital card game. There's so much that would be that they would have to change to make it a physical one because like so many like like you you what you wouldn't you wouldn't make a card that replaces your entire deck with a different class where every card costs one less or replaces your entire hand with a random assortment of Warlock cards, demons from Warlock that are all plus one, plus one. Like you can't, 
Like, there's so many things that you can do counters and you can do tokens and you can figure some stuff out. But the f philosophically, it would they would have to fundamentally change so many cards. Like, yeah, like, oh, it destroys all minions on the board. That's an easy thing to do. But, like, some of the stuff that uh, is in that, like, is in the game, some of the stuff I love the most... Like, imagine, like, replay all the battle cries. Like, every bat, Like, there are cards that replay all of the battle cries that you have played. The idea that, like, you'd be able to track that and remember that and have to go into your graveyard and, like, figure that out. Like, there's so much stuff that is just inherently, like, not gonna... Would never work in a physical game. Alright, so I'm packing this up. So let's go and, uh, instead of me packing... I'm going to go find us some somebody to raid. Uh, and we'll go uh, check out some cool stream friends doing the stream thing. Um, but for Thursday, I will have... Uh, I will have all this... Uh, oh, sorry. I will have all of the... Like, Nold. I'll have the second back Nold already. So we'll just get right into building. And that reminds me that i got to put a poll up before Thursday. So I can get my patrons. $10 patrons decide what we're doing. Um, so we're going to go raid, uh, all right, Pat, uh, Pat stream, uh, time to relax and watch Pat ball Ridge. <laughs> I just, I'm just finishing up the stream. I'm so sorry. The VOD will be up so you can check that out if this is what you'd like to do. Uh, reminder folks, I always stream 9 PM, uh, to, uh, 11 PM Easter time is, is where we go from there. We're going to go raid, um, Ms. Uh, Mary Kish, uh, Mary rules. And we're going to go uh, check her out. She's playing uh, uh, Ooblets, which is just a pretty dang chill, cool game. So we're going to go give her a raid. Uh, feel free to come and check us out. Uh, check that out. Uh, if you don't want a raid, you don't have to. But uh, but Mary is... Uh, what happened there? What happened? Oh, there it is. Okay, we're good. So we're going to go give her a raid because she rules. Uh, and it'll be fun to go see what's up with her. Feel free to come along. If you don't want to, I get it. If you do want to, I get that too. Uh, and I'll see you on the next Build With Bear. Uh, bonus, our bonus game stream Wednesday, 9 p.m. Playing Eastern, playing Hearthstone. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.